good evening world good evening all each and every person who is viewing this channel out there welcome to another session with me and in today's discussion or in today's session we would be looking at the much awaited and probably the most blooming and the most uh, you know i mean this module has taken the market by a shock all sap fi and co or fi co consultants are pretty happy that sap s4 simple finance is launched because this has created a whole new range of opportunities not only for developers but also for functional consultants to you know mark their presence in this world so we'll begin with understanding the interview question and answers this is the part one of the series and if in case you like my videos you can follow me on facebook or instagram which is varanda underscore gemini at yahoo.com and insta would be varanda underscore gemini so let us begin and for all those of you who do not know me well i am an sap about ui5 fury developer and this guy sitting out there that's me i have an experience on sap about followed by odata on html5 javascript xml all these which are basically parts of ui5 so it's basically only about and ui5 right and i'm currently pursuing or gaining knowledge on iot artificial intelligence python ml dl for da so for data science or we are not i'm not sure but yeah one of these so let us begin understanding something or some basic right from basics to intermediary and probably then to the complex level but as of now i would be having some basic level questions so all those of you who are looking for something extraordinary then probably you might want to search on google as well right so beginning with the first one what are the key elements of sap simple finance well now these set of key elements would be remaining same even if it's as four or even if it's normal ecc fico right so it's financial planning and analysis followed by finance and accounting followed by financial risk management and compliance and risk management now basically what are these financial planning and analysis as we can understand by the word itself it's basically for the organization to forecast and to lay a perfect plan for them so that they can have an effective organizational economic report right talking about finance and accounting it's basically uh, you know an advanced accounting and finance feature which would ensure that all the criminal terms and conditions are being held up to talking about finance risk management i think this is a very easily understandable term it's basically to determine or understand the danger that exists in processing of any financial transaction so this financial risk management would ensure that when a transaction is happening all the compliances are check marked so it's basically simple to determine the exceptional feasible funding costs related to market standards as an example compliance and risk management now this is basically to ensure that each and every employee or an executive keeps away from unauthorized entry right now why is that done because if any unauthorized entry is trespassed then it's a violation it's a violation of privacy it's a violation of many other things right so the corporations when they have compliance and risk management would be in a position to mitigate the risk or I mean, would be in a would be in a position to mitigate the danger concern in any financial process talking about the second one we have if a client never uses asset accounting is it required to have new asset accounting well the answer is pretty simple if there is no data that refers to customizing or any transactional factual information then it's not a mandatory or it's not a hard and fast rule to ensure migration and if the customer decides to use the asset accounting you know later with respect to time then they can set up the personalization in ing that is also possible so to answer the question in in, in short and sweet more well it is no it is not a mandate is it possible for a company to have a positive cash flow when in financial trouble well that's perfectly possible that is always possible now there are two cases when it's possible so we look at the two cases so the first case would be when a company has no proper planned 
I mean, future planning that's happening, right? So this would happen when they are not, uh, you know, taking care of, uh, you know, their payables that are to be paid in time and uh, the stock that, that are, I mean, the receivables that are to be received on time. And this is how they end up in a financial trouble and that's one. Now, the second would be another case wherein the organization would have had some solid incomes for the next two months. And after those two months, they are able to foresee a, a, a huge decline in their sales or a huge decline in their income. And that can also happen. Now, this also generally happens because there are no deals or prospects that are uh, upheld or withheld in the pipeline. This is also a result of improper planning. So these are the two cases. So to again make it short and sweet, the first one would be when you are postponing your payables and you are showing a greater income, a positive income flow. The second one would be when you have a future forecast uh, de demonstrated decline that you are very clearly able to foresee, that is case two. What is a transport request? Well, it's basically a very simple ECC terminology. All those who must have worked on ECC must be knowing this. It's basically a change request. Whenever you come up with any kind of a change or any kind of a development, you come up with a transport request. So what would this contain? A transport request would contain any kind of an info pertaining to the kind of change, the purpose of transport request, which categories it, uh, or should it be set into and also the target system. All these would be recorded and then your project will be taken forward. The next one we have is what are the various compression techniques available? Well, there are three variants of compression techniques that we have guys. The first one is cluster encoding. The second one would be run length encoding. And the third one would be dictionary encoding. I would request you to write what this is in the comment section below for your own good. We would look at what each of these variants is in the upcoming videos. Right? The sixth one is what is, oh, sorry, how is account type related to a document type? The first difference that you got to remember when you're answering this question is document type is basically represented by a two character digit sorry a two digit code it could be uh, and mostly it is not alphanumeric it is only alphabet but then talking about an account type they are all represented by single character code like a b c this you know one single character so you have around five account types which is a d k m and s wherein A would be for assets, D would be for debtor, that is the person who's taking the debt, which is customer, K would be the creditor, which is vendor, M for materials, and S for GL. Explain groupings and level. I would not hesitate saying that this is basically a parent-child kind of relationship. Let's understand why. Groupings determine basically how to summarize your data with a good number of groups and degrees defined. A group would add up to a variety of financial institution debts and include a variety of levels. Hence, a level denotes the source of data or account transactions. If it is denoting a source of data or account transactions, basically a part of grouping. And if there's anything that's below grouping and degrees, then that is line items, which are displayed using the listing display. Eighth one is what is activity based costing? So this is basically a variant of costing. And in this variant, you would be able to break down the expenses you had into very specific sector so it is activity so, so now let's say i have sent a team for outing i have sent a team for onshore project and there is one team that's working here as a financial manager it would be my responsibility to ensure how much of finance is flowing into each of the teams and for which purposes so this all would be taken care of by activity based costing Question number nine would be, what are the configurations for bank statement processing? We have four 
process is basically which would be you should be starting the variant followed by a search id coming up with a processing type and then declaring your internal bank determination so these are the configurations for the bank statement to get processed how many charts of account can be attached to a company code so it's basically one or extra operative charts of account which would also be coa co is chart of account so <clears throat> any of these can be assigned to a organization or a company's code coa my friend should be assigned to a business enterprise code and this is the operative which is used also by fi or a co consultant one chart of account can be assigned to any number of companies or any number of company codes to be very specific rather that is a couple of business enterprise codes can either be same or they can be different but a corporation code now what is the difference between a corporation code and a company code corporation code would also be having a country specific company code or an international company code and this can have a uh, precise use of coa coa being chart of account along with the operative chart of account and the hyperlink between normal and the us coa appears in the alternate quantity area of the gl master record right so again to cut all this and answer the sentence in one go you can attach one or as many number of operative chart of accounts you wish for right so i hope you have learned something new and i also hope you have enjoyed the presentation thanks a lot for being there and being patient in the next video we will also come up with more updates and more question answers on simple finance s4 hana interview question and answers if you find this useful please take a moment to hit the like button and also subscribe to this channel to support us because only if you like or subscribe would, would you be able to let us know or would it be motivating for us to make more videos and if there's any query that you have or if there's any questions that you've been asked please use the comment section be below because it would also be helping a lot of people who are looking for some information on sap s4 hana and if there's any information that's also missing please use the comment section below and if you feel that this might be useful for any of your colleague or any other individual please share this video immediately because if this is useful at least for a few i think the motive of making this video and the hard work is getting paid off and achieved thanks a lot for watching have a great day this is me varun rao logging off hoping to see you in the next video